Well, guess what? That's one of many verses that proves Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. And Jesus said pretty clearly in Matthew chapter 19, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? By the way, it was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. You've got to say that these days. But Jesus said that was the beginning. Same thing in Mark 10, 6. Well, now hold it. If that is the beginning, then we can figure out the age of the earth. Because the Bible says death came <clears throat> by sin. You know why we have death and suffering in the world today? It's because of Adam's sin. The Bible tells us clearly by man came death. In Adam all die. Man brought death into the world, according to Scripture. Now, according to evolution, death brought man into the world. Absolute opposite. And the Bible says Adam was the first man. It's real clear about the topic. And Eve was the mother of all living. So that makes it pretty simple. Adam was 130 when Seth was born. Seth was 105 when Enos was born. Enos was 90 when Canaan was born. If you go through the Bible and add up the dates, it's easy to do, folks. There's a couple of tricky spots in there. But you can go through the Bible and add up the dates, and you're going to get about 6,000 years for the total history of the world. You can get these charts. I've got one down here at the bottom of this, uh, hanging from the bottom. If you get my seminar notebook, the last page folds out to be this chart. We also have them laminated if you want them for placemats when your skeptic friends come for lunch. <laughs> you, can, you can really stir up a conversation with one of those things. <laughs> But anyway, if you add up the dates in the Bible, you get about 4,000 B.C. for the creation. Now, I don't try to put an exact date on it, okay? I don't say the creation was 4,004 B.C., October 23rd at 2 in the afternoon, okay? I don't think you can get that close. I think Adam was made in the afternoon because it's just before Eve. It's the only clue I found. <laughs> and I can't prove this, but I think I figured out why God made Adam first. I think God made Adam first because he didn't want any advice on how to do it. <laughs> I can see it now. No, God, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Shut up, Eve. I know what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> now, B.C. means before Christ. Just about every new textbook has changed it. They're calling it BCE. It means before the Common Era. You just check it out, folks. Christ is gone out of the schools. One guy said, why didn't God stop the shooting at Columbine High School? It's easy. God's not allowed in school anymore. <laughs> Don't blame him. <laughs> We've got a problem here. Now, the textbook says the earth is billions of years old. Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. Hmm. Was Jesus lying? Did he not understand modern science, or was he right? How old is this earth, anyway? Well, we cover about 50 different ways to prove the earth is not billions of years old on the second half of videotape number one back there on the table. We don't have time to cover that tonight. But if the earth is only 6,000 years old, then what about dinosaurs? Where do they fit in? Well, it's real simple. Dinosaurs were big lizards with Adam and Eve. Noah took them on the ark. You see, dinosaurs on the ark, they're kind of big, aren't they? Well, the big ones were big, but the little ones were little. And Noah was 600 years old when he went on that boat. I just bet he was smart enough to figure out you don't have to bring the biggest ones. Bring two babies. Mm -hmm. Just be sure to get a pink one and a blue one. That'll be important later, okay? There's all kinds of reasons for bringing babies on the ark, okay? Now listen, kids, we cover all that on video number three, all about dinosaurs. There could be some still alive today. Loch Ness Monster, Lake Champlain Monster, the one that washed up on the beach in California, 1925. All those pictures are on the website. But listen, kids, your textbook's going to tell you that you are an animal. Don't you believe that for one second? You were made in God's image. And you're going to stand before God one of these days and give an answer for everything you've ever said or thought or done or thought about doing. God keeps careful records. He's got it all. And if you want to get that record erased, there's only one way to do it. That's the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, which cleanseth us from all iniquity. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> all right, let's uh, summarize here. God made the world, He owns it. He makes the rules. We are all guilty of breaking His rules. 
He told us pretty clearly, thou shalt not bear false witness. Don't lie. These are the Ten Commandments. How many of you have ever told a lie in your life? Put your hand up. Come on, are you doing another one? Don't give me that pious look. Put your hand up there, brother. Okay. Number eight, thou shalt not steal. How many ever stole something? Come on, you already told me you're a liar. Put your hand up. Okay. Okay. Okay, so far we know we're all a bunch of lying thieves, right? Do you want to read the whole list and see how we're doing? We better, we better stop right there. There's no question we're guilty. The Bible says evil shall not dwell with thee. If you've committed one sin, you're guilty. You're going to hell. And some people think, well, God's going to weigh my good works against my bad works. Well, who on earth told you that? Why don't you go before the judge and say, Judge, I only murdered one person. Look at all the people I didn't murder. You've got to weigh my good against my bad. <laughs> Duh. He's not, he's not going to fall for that. And neither is God. We're guilty, folks, so we're going to be punished. Or we can find a substitute. Now, I can't substitute for your sins because I have a whole bunch of my own. Okay? And you can't substitute for mine because you have a bunch of your own too. But Jesus Christ is not only willing, he's able. He's the only one who's able to substitute for your sins. I can't. You can't for mine. He's the only one who lived a sinless life. And praise God, he's willing also. Hey, if you died today, where would you go? I tell people, you really ought to think about that because you're going to be dead for a long time. George Washington died 205 years ago, and he is still dead. How much longer does he have to go? I don't care how long you live, you're going to be dead longer than that. Think about it. Think about it. You could die tonight. Have you seen the way they drive in Southern California? You got some rednecks moved out here, folks. I'm telling you what. You can get killed this evening. I'm going to die someday. I'm going to, I'm going to try to make it the last thing I do, but it's going to happen. Okay? <laughs> it's going to happen to you too. Now, all you get in this life is a little bitty dash between two dates. That's it. Someday there's going to be a rock with your name on it. You know I'm telling you the truth. What are you doing with your dash? A little boy came to Jesus one day. He said, Jesus, you look like you're hungry. You've been preaching all day. Here, Jesus, you can have my sack lunch. I don't have much. I only got five biscuits and two fish sticks, but you can have it. Jesus said, son, you mean I can have your whole lunch? He said, yeah, Jesus, go ahead. He said, well, son, have a seat right there. Watch this. 5,000 men plus women plus children, probably at least 20,000 people. Jesus said, okay, everybody sit down. They all sat down. He reached in that little boy's sack lunch and started making fish sandwiches and passed them all out. Fed everybody in the crowd, including that little boy. That's interesting. When they got done, they picked up 12 baskets full of leftovers and sent them home with that little boy. Here, son, take this home to mama. Now, that little boy could have kept his lunch and fed himself. He decided to give it away. And he fed himself. And 20,000 more people. And got his name in the Bible. Not his name, but his story. 